I want to hear your opinion. How long do you think we will have this motor home? I want to see what everyone's opinions are. Drop it in the comments. Just in case you are unfamiliar with who we are, I am Lynn. Mike. And we're the Wandering Wagners. Welcome to the channel. Let's get to it. We own a 2020 Nexus race. We've had it for a little over three years. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what we like, what we don't like, what we've changed. Um, for our normal subscribers, you followed us, you probably know about the things that we've changed. True. But then there might be those of you that are researching Nexus. Or researching a motorhome in general. Or a Super C. Yes. <laughs> so we have a Nexus Wraith 34W. Yep. So our Wraith is currently up to 38,000 miles, maybe 38.5 or something like that. Anyways, yeah. It's, it's over 38,000 miles. This is probably the longest that we've owned an RV, other than our very first brand new RV was a 2008 Jayco travel trailer. We had that for like five years. Yeah. And, and it, it was totaled out by hail. <laughs> right, you know, so, <laughs> we've always had the power of bringing the storms. So fast forward to now, we've had this for over three years. We we love it. We're gonna talk about what we like, what we don't like, things like that. Mm -hmm. We have we have notes. Yeah, because we had to write down all of the things because it is very hard to just do it off <laughs> off memory. There's there's plenty that we've changed or modified. Anybody that owns an RV will tell you like, oh yeah, we've modified a bunch of stuff too. The water pump. This is like one of the most basic things that we've changed. Yeah, very early on. It came with just the stock sure flow, like $40 water pump. It's like rah, rah, rah. It's a very good <laughs> imitation of a stock water pump. So we changed out the water pump and it, it made an amazing difference. And it's a variable flow, so it doesn't do that noise all the time. We'll put links to a lot of this stuff in the description. Yes. Sea level gauges. Mm. The tank level gauges that come in any RV, they suck. They're terrible. It tells you you've got like a third tank or a half tank or whatever. But like how much is suck. between two thirds and, a, and full? Right. You know, like how so much? So the sea level gauges tell you exactly, they'll tell you you have 47% fresh or yep. 80 Three percent gray. It tells you exactly. Down. Yeah, it's awesome. Super easy to install. Yeah, we installed that ourselves. We'll link that video up here and probably in the description along with the gauges. Surge protector. Now mm -hmm. most people get the surge protector. They plug into the pedestal, then you plug your RV into it. Yes. We went hardwired. Yep. Because I just didn't want to mess with it. I just wanted it to always be there. So I hardwired the surge protector. Right. The downside to the hardwired is that if you were to get a surge that would blow the surge protector, then you're kind of screwed. Because yeah. It's hardwired. It's hardwired. Now me, I would just bypass it. I wired it in. I can unwire it. I can True. bypass it. It would be a pain, but I could do it. Right. But there's a benefit to it. It can't easily be stolen. Correct. Like the plug-in ones. Yeah, I could just walk up to any campsite right and now and it. just take it. So. <laughs> just take it and walk away with right. it. Right. We like to winter camp. Yes. So I put an outlet in our dump bay. That way I can plug in a little space heater mm -hmm. and it keeps the, the gray and the black holding tanks from freezing and also the dump valve is there, which is could potentially freeze. Could, so yes. that heater runs, it keeps our dump bay at anywhere from 50 to 65 degrees in that range, depending how cold it mm -hmm. is. We've camped all the way down to zero. Yeah, and that's regular air temperatures. We're from the north, we're from the Midwest, and that's where we like to winter camp. Going along with winter camping, I added an outlet, a dedicated 20 amp outlet in the bedroom to run an electric heater. Yes. Because when we camp in the winter, we don't want to burn through propane. Mm -hmm. So we almost exclusively heat with electric. Yes, we do. So we have space heaters all over the place. Something small that we've done, yet I really, really like a lot, is uh, the cab steps. Yeah. The steps that Nexus puts on these things from the factory sucks. I hate them. 
You can go back to our original videos of when we first got it, and you can hear those exact words coming out of oh, his mouth. Oh, I hate those steps with a passion. Nexus, if you're listening, change your damn steps. No one likes them. Everyone's been trying to get these steps that we currently have installed. They are the stock international truck right, steps. Right, it's just factory truck steps. I love them. Now, I have a trucking background. Right, so. Which kind of is why I love the motorhome we got. But anyways, I changed the steps out. They're phenomenal. The refrigerator. Mm. We specifically wanted a propane fridge when we were shopping. Anytime we've shopped. Yeah, that's I'm true. I'm very anti-residential fridge. Now, a lot of people love the residential fridges, and if that's fine for you and it works for you, then great, yeah. get one. Everyone's got their own personal opinion. But we like to travel long distances. We have long travel days, and that means we are going to dry camp in parking lots, whether it be a Cracker Barrel, a Walmart, or whatever the case may be, right. a truck stop. We dry camp, uh, and I don't want to have to run a refrigerator off of an inverter. Mm -hmm. So I wanted the propane fridge, and it worked great for us. And I always was, and I still am anti-residential fridge, but now we've discovered the 12 volt fridge. And it was like, ah. <laughs> right. <laughs> residential fridges are just extremely inefficient because you have to take 12 volts from your battery, run it through an inverter, convert it up to 120 volts AC mm -hmm. to run your residential refrigerator. 12 volt fridge runs straight off the batteries, no conversion needed, so there's right. no loss there. Yeah, which is really nice. Yeah, and the 12 volt fridge, we got a Dometic and it's been phenomenal. The space inside of it, we have, we went from an eight cubic foot to a 10, which sounds minimal, but the inside storage space is so much bigger. Huge, even the freezer. And we've, we've chocked this thing full of literally everything and still, still have, have so room. much room still have room left over and same for the freezer the freezer is a <laughs> lot bigger so highly recommend i ran an hdmi cable this was a bear to do so i actually did it when the refrigerator was removed mm -hmm. so i ran an hdmi cable from the front all the way to the back and the reason why i did that is because we have which came from the factory and in motion satellite yes we have a dish network receiver so i don't want two or three receivers because we got a TV up front, we got a TV in the bedroom, we got a TV outside. So I just put an HDMI splitter up there, ran a long cable all the way to the back, and then split it there for the bedroom TV and the outside TV. So now if we want to watch Dish Network in the bedroom, all we have to do is select the channel and it's on all the TVs. A big upgrade for us, um, kind of a game changer, we added yeah. solar. Yes, we did. And that was fairly recently. So some of you may have seen that, but we added four 200 watt panels. Right. Originally we went with 400 watts, two panels, mm -hmm. two 200 watt panels. And we liked it. So we added two more panels. So we're up to 800 watts of solar. We upgraded to a lithium battery. Yes, we did. And that was huge. Uh, Red Odeo hooked us up with a battery. Mm -hmm. They gave us a 200 amp hour battery. And I was blown away at the difference it made versus the lead acids. Yeah. So then they hooked us up with a 410 amp hour lithium battery. Yeah. Holy crap. It's, it's massive and it's amazing. We never have to worry about running out of power when we're just, you know, we don't even need to have a sunny day. We know we're not going to run out of power for the fridge. Right. That battery just keeps going and going and going. On the inside, we had a dinette and then we have a couch. But it just, it always felt claustrophobic. Yeah, we just had like- It's like an aisle. An aisle way. Mm -hmm. And when you have two decently sized dogs, they There's like no to be room. under your feet, no room. And if I spent any amount of time in the Wraith, I started to go crazy because it just felt closed in. Mm -hmm. So Lynn came up with the idea, let's rip out the dinette. Yeah. Let's take it out. And I was hesitant, I was on the fence because we did use the table to eat breakfast, eat lunch, eat dinner. Underneath the, the benches was storage, had drawers that would pull out. Those offered a lot of storage. They did. We found what is called a server. Yes. It's uh, something more fancy than I've ever owned. Oh, absolutely. It's a marble top, it's hardwood. Yeah, it's very, very <laughs> nice. It's meant for a house. Right, so it's got like three drawers that pull out. It's got two cabinet doors that open Swing up. Swing open with soft clothes and stuff like that. It opened up that space. 
so much. It was such a significant increase in just floor space. Yeah, the dogs love it. So when Piper goes into her crate, there's space to get around the entire crate. Whereas before it was, that was locked in. Even, there's no space. Even with the slide in. Yes. She can go in her crate. Yep. And there's plentiful space. So we have more storage, we have more floor space, and we put the lithium battery in there. Right. Uh, we wanted to keep the battery inside where it's temperature controlled, where it's mm -hmm. cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter. So we use the bottom shelf there to, to store a Red Odeo battery. Yeah, and like you had mentioned, we did not lose out on the space from the drawers in the dinette. We gained. We gained space and it's more organized. So everything is way more easily to be accessed. We changed out the front seats in the cab, the driver's seat, the passenger seat. Yep. We put in air ride seats. Mm -hmm. And this kind of goes into something else we'll talk about here because our yeah. motorhome doesn't have air ride. So we added uh, an air horn kit. We wanted to add just uh, an air compressor and an air tank so we could put the seats in. Right. But I found an air horn kit on Amazon. It was like 300 bucks or less, like $268 or something like that. So I said, that's the one I'm getting. Yeah. So I put that in, so uh, we got the air ride seats, and as a side benefit, we have an air horn. Yes, an <laughs> so. actual air horn in addition to the city horn. But the air ride seats, we got them at our local international truck dealership. They're made by Seats Inc. Yes, we get that question asked a lot. We just picked them up. They were in stock right there. We said, hey, we'll take two, and they loaded them up. They're like 730 bucks yeah. each or something like that. And mm -hmm. those were kind of like mid-grade. Yeah, we got the Legacy Silver. Uh, models and what a difference it makes these seats also have lumbar support which the RV seats had none of that and they were always too high and too far away and like you they didn't have the adjustments these have full adjustments so that is why we really enjoy these seats mm -hmm. the Wraith came with a convection oven and yes. we were kind of torn oh my gosh because Linda's all the cooking and baking I'm hands-off I can't <laughs> yeah. do it it makes me angry when I try <laughs> yeah it's very very so she really, really, really wanted just traditional propane oven. Yes. This didn't have it. It had a convection. And I had never used one before. I was quite good at using RV ovens. I had never problem. Everyone always complains about them, but I'd never had that problem. Never Everything, had to use a pizza stone or anything. None of we, that stuff. We I had was, good luck. Yeah, so it's just, I'm just that good. <laughs> right. Anyway, fast forward to now we have this and I'm like, well, we can always get an oven if this doesn't work out. And that was always in the back of my mind. We can always undo this if, if we have to. And the convection has been phenomenal. Oh my gosh. It's been so good. No complaints. There's nothing that she can't make it. She's made pies, she made full Thanksgiving dinners. The turkeys, hams, whatever. Stuffings. I made all the things, cookies, cakes, pies, cinnamon rolls, everything and anything. So this really isn't a mod, but the one that came with the Wraith, it died. It just yes. one day just died. I feel like that was within the first year maybe. I think so. So when we replaced it, I went out and spent like, oh, it was over six hundred dollars for an yeah. LG because we like studio. the convection. Yeah, we like the convection that much. We got an LG Studio convection oven to and, put it in its place. And I will say that it is definitely an upgrade over the, the original one. one. Yes. yes, we upgraded. Well, I'm sure many people do. We upgraded the mattress. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, "Oh, just get the memory foam topper." No, yeah. the mattress came out. It was still in the plastic. We just said, "You're gone." We've done that with almost every RV we've ever had, with the exception of the toy hauler. And we've had this, this memory foam mattress for years, long time. Yeah, and we actually have the same model, but a king in our home base. <laughs> yes, yeah. because we like it so much. It was some off brand when we bought it, and it was cheap when we bought it, but off since Amazon. then, the price has come way up. We paid like $200, $300, yeah. now it's over 800 Right, but so, I, I would still highly recommend it for your house or your RV. They've been great. We upgraded the TVs. Yes. In the living area and the bedroom, have not upgraded the one outside. Okay, yeah. That's still the stock one. They're Jensen's, we replaced them with Vizio. Yep. It's been a really, really good upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> it's been great. Now, if you're not a TV watcher, I don't need to do it. 
but we and do like it. there's the crowd that says that's not camping if you're watching TV or using satellite or whatever. Hey, it rains on us constantly. All the time. It's getting kind of dark as we speak. Come <laughs> so on. It rains on <laughs> us. We got to do something. Yeah. Liquid spring suspension. Yes. I don't know if you've heard of liquid spring or you haven't li heard of liquid spring. Nothing compares. Nothing. No. I even said this before we even had liquid yes. spring. In our one year review video, I talked about we it. talked about it because at that time we just had the upgraded spring pack. A lot of people, when they were shopping for a Super C, they must have air brakes and air ride. Mm -hmm. I say no. I'm not a fan. Air ride will never even come close to the quality of the ride that you will get from Liquid Spring. It is phenomenal. 100%. It's expensive. Yes. However, if you buy a motorhome with Spring Ride and then upgrade, you're still ahead because that air yes. ride chassis cost you extra it does and you're going to get a better ride it's going to protect your motorhome protect your investment from the wear and tear of just the overall crappy roads in the country i've said before that liquid spring is smart air ride is dumb yes and what i mean is that liquid spring has a computer that cycles or checks the system i believe it's like a thousand times a second yeah so it will adapt to whatever the environment is. Mm -hmm. If you're being passed by a semi truck and the body of the RV starts to roll or lean, Liquid Spring detects it immediately and corrects it. With this chassis, we can only currently get it to date on the rear suspension. We're looking forward to getting the front done. They just don't have it yet. Yeah, they just haven't come out with that yet for this. Now, a lot of the Class A motorhomes, they can get it on front and rear. Now it is self-leveling which also gives the option that you can raise or drop your suspension. So if I'm going down a, out a driveway, it's real steep, I can raise it up, I think three, three inches. Three inches, both directions. Or if we're going underneath a real low clearance, we're not sure, you can drop it down three inches. Which is just good peace of mind. Three inches doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're gonna scrape, right. three inches is a lot. Yeah, It's a lot. The way that this Wraith was wired, <laughs> the AC power side of it, they put all of the breakers on one leg of the 50 amp. So if you're not familiar with how 50 amp service works, it's actually truly a 100 amp service because you got two legs of 50 amp. They put at Nexus all of the breakers on one 50 amp leg, which left the other one completely open. So I was removing breakers and separating them. I mean, they had the front and rear AC on the same side. Like, so why? I split them up. Why? 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 I balanced it all out because we were tripping the main breaker a often, lot. often. For no reason. And we haven't tripped it since. Nope. I upgraded the cab bolts. Yep. What I mean by that, now the thing about Nexus is they actually listen to their customer base. They do, they do. And this is a repair that not only myself has made, but multiple other Nexus owners have done the same thing. We got the bunk that goes over top the cab of the chassis. There's bolts that kind of sandwich it together. Yep. And they just, well, they didn't even use bolts. They were using screws. Yeah, like tapper. Self like little self-tapper screws, and those screws were snapping, which meant that the bunk overhead was moving independently to the cab. Yeah. And it was causing lots of squeaks, and over time it can cause leaks. So ours was starting to squeak. I didn't wait yes. for them to break. I just took all the screws out, I drilled holes, and I replaced it with bolts. Yes and it made it completely quiet again inside. Mm -hmm. And since then, Nexus, like I said, they listen. That's what they're doing with all of their new ones right off the line is they're putting bolts in instead of screws. Right, and since that upgrade or modification, it's been silent to this day, and that was two years ago. Something I've added, which you wouldn't really think is a big deal, and you'd think that in this day and age, uh, manufacturers would be doing, but I put in USB chargers. Yeah. I put in a USB charger up front in the cab and I put USB chargers on both sides of the bed in the bedroom because at night we just want to plug our phones in and let them charge while we sleep. Right. We didn't have USB ports. My side did. Yes. But it was ports. only powered off of AC power. Right. That's the kicker here. It's <laughs> not just the USBs. It's how they are powered. So when I put in these, these USB ports, chargers, whatever you want to call them, 
they are run directly off of 12 volts. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if we're plugged into power or staying overnight in a parking lot. A small mod, but yet mighty, yes. is the exhaust brake. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the Triumph and the Wraith Super C's from Nexus do not come equipped with it. However, it's super easy to add. All you yeah. gotta do is take your Wraith to an international dealer, a competent international dealer. Yeah. Good luck. Selking International. Selking is extremely good. And for $500 on the high end, maybe 300 or so on the low end, they can enable the exhaust brake. It's already there. Yes. All they do is they add a switch, which is no wiring required. It's a CAN bus system. They put in the switch and they plug into the computer and turn it on. Turn that on and then you are done. It takes almost no time whatsoever. We get this question asked probably a the lot, most. A lot. And we give everyone all, a lot of these dealers claim it can't be done or they don't know how Wrong or dealer. whatever. We give them all of our information from Selking and actually a lot of people have come up to our specific dealer to get things done on their motorhomes because they know our dealer would do all the things. People have driven from Texas and Florida and, to Ohio. Yeah, I feel like all over. To get the exhaust brake done. Yes. The next one doesn't sound like a lot, but it was huge. I upgraded the front shocks. Yes, but it made a huge difference for us. The shocks that came from the factory from International they sucked. Yeah. <laughs> it just flat out sucked. They didn't do anything. So I upgraded to Monroe's mm -hmm. and it was night and day difference. Now keep in mind, like I said, liquid spring currently is only available on the rear. Mm -hmm. So the Monroe shocks is the best we could do for the front. And man, what a difference it made. Uh, the last modification that we did, now there might be some we're forgetting. I don't know. We've done a lot. Oh, I'm sure we're forgetting something. We replaced, I replaced yes. the bathroom faucet. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but those plastic faucets or fixtures that camper, the RV manufacturers use, they're not good. And in the bathroom, the sink isn't very big. So like if you're washing your hands, the faucet comes like right here. It's and like you're straight like, out. You're like, oh, let me get my hands washed. It just doesn't work out. So, so we got a little better. I bought a residential bathroom faucet mm -hmm. and now you can actually get your hands in under there to, yeah. to wash. Now we're going to go over likes and dislikes. We'll do the likes first. None of this is in any, in any particular order. Yeah, very randomized, just based off of what we could remember. <laughs> right. If you watch our, our one year video, some of these likes and dislikes are the same. They've carried over. Yeah. I think a lot of them are the same. I really, really love, and remember I have a trucking background, the international chassis and the Cummins engine. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that they're like, oh, Freightliner is the only way to go. Okay, fine. That's just like saying Ford's the only way or Chevy's the only way or Ram's the only way. We've had them all. I like international. I've driven long haul coast to coast in international trucks. I like them. It's my preference. Mm -hmm. Spend your money however you choose. Now, if this was on an international chassis with a Max Force engine, I would have burned it to the ground. He never would have. That was the first question he asked. <laughs> When I said, hey. What color is the engine? I found this and he's like, what's in it? I said, <laughs> well, it's red, so it's Cummins. He's like, okay, perfect. Red we paint, can, we can we'll go, go look, look at, at it. it. <laughs> yes, and that was the thing. When we found Nexus, I was like, holy crap, it's on an international chassis. Right. Now I have to look at it. Right. I personally, I will take the international cab interior over the Freightliner all day long. Yeah, you, you, he said that a lot over many years, so. Freightliner likes to take, just for example, cruise control. We use that all the time. Freightliner puts it on the dash. International puts it on the steering wheel. Right. Just, Small yet yeah. mighty, isn't it? <laughs> the Cummins engine in this motorhome is a 6.7 liter. It's the basic design 6.7 that's in the pickup trucks. Yeah. But they're severely derated in a commercial chassis. Right. So we are 300 horsepower. The Ghost has the same 6.7, but it's rated at 360 horsepower. Yeah. So we're 300 horsepower, 660 torque. The Ghost is 360, 880, or 800. 800, 880. I, I, think, it, I think it was 880, but I'm not sure. Anyway, the 300 horsepower has done fine. It's been great. We've been out west. We've been through the mountains. We've been in the Smoky Mountains, Rocky Mountains. We've been on the north. Yeah. Been in the south. The 300 horsepower has done absolutely everything we've asked it to. It has. There have been people that went and upgraded the power. 
I'm kind of shying away from that because of the transmission. It has right. an Allison 2500 series transmission in it, and Allison says 300 is the limit. Now, we were dumb years and years ago. We drag raced a diesel pickup truck. She drag raced. Yes. And we tore up transmissions. I mean, we tore them apart. Billet. Everything was billet. Billet input, billet intermediate, output, billet out, output, output shaft. Everything. And we destroyed some $10,000 transmissions. Because we had some power behind that diesel truck. But. So now I'm like, hey, 300 is great. It doesn't yeah. make enough power to break itself. Exactly, and that's something to keep in mind. It's like, okay, is that really gonna make it better when you're up the mountain two seconds earlier? No. It, I really don't think it makes that much of a difference. It, we're never the fastest, but we're not the slowest. Oh yeah, we're passing semis. Yeah. In the mountains, so, we're passing semis left and right. So that, I mean, that's kind of a personal preference. If you want 360, you can uprate the 300 horse, or you can just go buy something with the 360 already in it, yeah. whatever you choose. So something that we really like and are currently using as we speak is the washer dryer. Yes. This is something that we never had until this motor home. We always had to use a laundry mat or something like that at the campground or find some place. And it is a total game changer because we can just, I get it, it's smaller, but who cares? We can't go without it. You now. can't go. We can do it. We can do laundry going down the road. Yes. Something else that we really like, both on the interior and the exterior, is the amount of storage. And this is a like and a dislike, but we'll do it. Since we talk about likes, we'll talk about the storage that we like. Okay. <laughs> I do like the interior storage because it's plentiful. Um, there's some things about it that we'll cover later that aren't as plentiful. There's storage everywhere inside. There's actually unused storage inside. The outside storage is great. Half of it is uh, pass through. It goes all the way over to the other side. Yeah. Half of it isn't. I don't mind that it's half and half. There's so much outside storage that I haven't even used it all. We talked about how we like to winter camp. Yeah. That's one of the things we love about this. And when we were shopping is something we look specifically for. Yes. This is not marketed as a four season. No. I don't not. even know if they market it as a three season. I honestly don't know. I don't think they do, but we got it for that purpose. For winter camping because a lot of RV manufacturers put the dump valve on the outside, on the lower end. Yeah. Just just exposed because who camps in the winter? What kind of idiot camps in the winter? These idiots. Right here. We You're looking at them. I don't know if you call it the dump bay. It's enclosed. Now it's only enclosed with sheet metal, but I knew that it was enclosed enough that we could heat it and we could camp all winter, which we do. We camp all winter up north in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Michigan, Indiana, yeah, everything. Wisconsin. Pretty much uh, in the Great Lakes area. We've Midwest. been to the UP. Yeah. UP in the And land. we've had zero issues out of it. Uh, something you might not think about, and this is also a benefit of it being on the international chassis, the length. I'm talking bumper to bumper length of this thing. Which is 34 feet. If, if you remember, our model number, 34W, and it is actually 34 feet. It's like 33 feet, 11 inches. You want to know how so. I know is because I measured it like I want to say seven times <laughs> before does. we brought it home. The Freightliner chassis. Now, I'm not saying Freightliner is bad because it's not. Freightliner is a no. very, very good chassis. It's a very Absolutely. reputable company. I've driven plenty of Freightliner trucks. Yes. I just prefer International. It's just me. The Freightliner chassis measures over 39 feet. I think it's 39.11 or so something call it, like that. This is, say, 40 feet long. Yeah. We did not want to be 40 feet long plus the length of our Jeep that we tow. Right. We like, <laughs> this next one, people are like, what? We like the, the slidey windows. Ah, yes. Not the frameless. Right. We've had frameless windows. I'm not a fan. Given the option of sliders or frameless, I will take sliders every time. And the reason for that is we can have the sliders open going down the road and we can get all kinds of airflow. With yeah. the ones that poke out this far, oh, oh, you're not going to get any crosswind, you're not going to get any airflow, and you shouldn't have them open going down the road. Frameless look better. Yes. Look more modern, look mm -hmm. more sleek. Fancy. But slide windows is where it's at. Yep. 
The Wraith has one Max Air fan. We yes. really, really like it. We use it all the time. Even while we're driving, we'll use it. Yeah, we do. It's reversible, so it can suck the air out or draw it in, mm -hmm. whichever way you want to go with it. It's also just like that. We only have one. I know. <laughs> we kind of wish we had two because the bathroom does not have the Max Air fan. It just has a regular little fan like that big. So... The tank capacities of this motorhome I like. For what they were able to do with only 34 feet, I'm very, very, very happy with it. Mm -hmm. Starting with fuel. 70 gallons of fuel. There have been a couple people that modified these into dual fuel tanks. Yeah. So you got 140 gallons. That would be awesome. That would be amazing. Yeah. I just don't feel like digging Doing into it at this point. The fresh tank, 75 gallons. Very good. Very good. The black and the gray, each 43 gallons. Yes. The propane, the LP, is 20.3 gallons. Don't mm -hmm. confuse that with pounds. It's 20.3 right. gallons. Gallon. And we do have a six gallon water heater. I really like the six gallon water heater because it recovers super fast. People have asked us about going with a tankless water heater. Yeah. This one just keeps on going. It's yeah. a tank, <laughs> a little tank. <laughs> it just keeps chugging along. So I'm not going to take it out. We've never had a problem. It, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna break now. <laughs> Jinxed oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Jinxed Whoops, it. my bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, access to everything. Now this is something that Lynn can really appreciate because I do 99.9% .9 of the driving. This is for all you passenger princesses out there <laughs> that uh, you can appreciate and really enjoy being able to access everything the fridge, the bathroom, the bedroom, the pantry, literally everything is accessible. And it's amazing to be able to use everything going down the road. Now, we're not saying that you should take off your seatbelt and move around inside the motorhome while the motorhome is traveling down the road, but if you choose to do so. It's a personal preference. <laughs> it's something you can absolutely do. Yeah. I kind of get jealous sometimes because she'll use the bathroom a couple times. I'm like, Where's the next rest area? Yeah. I gotta pull over. I know, I know. Right. Also it goes for when we're dry camping at like a Cracker Barrel or something. Yes, so with the layout that we have, some of the beds, they fold. Ours does not. So you can use it with the slide in as it is. You don't need to fold it. So it makes it really nice. We're gonna go to some dislikes. Mm, Nothing this, is perfect. This is everyone's favorite though, I think. Right? Rust. <sighs> Now, the original steps that I hated so dearly that came from the factory on the, up on the front on the cab, within the first six months of ownership, and we bought it in what, May? May. It was developing rust on those steps. Without ever seeing salt. Right. I contacted Nexus, a representative that wrote back said, sorry, corrosion is not covered under warranty. You're on your own for corrosion. Okay, if that's their policy, it's their policy is what it is. You be the judge if it's a good or bad policy. But <laughs> within six months of owning it, it began to rust. Now, underneath the frame and everything's been fine. Yes. There's surface rust here and there that's normal. If it's right. steel, it's gonna rust. Mm -hmm. But the steps, it was purely cosmetic, yeah. but I mean, it was rusting hardcore. Very much so. We also have rust on the furnace cover on the outside yes. it is corroding bad now you can't see it technically but you can see all the paint bubbling up in its old rusty fashion <laughs> and it kind of goes along with the the paint overall on this thing yeah i love the paint scheme i love the colors mm -hmm. but there are areas where the paint is starting to flake or chip a little bit yeah, and rusting on the furnace cover it shouldn't be doing that if it was prepped correctly Right, I'm not thrilled with the paint job. Don't think that I hate the paint because there's just little small areas where right. there's defects, I mm -hmm. guess you could say. The floors, and the reason being is they are such a, a light color that they show all the dirt and the texture of the floors. This is what some people can't seem to get over is, well, if you cleaned your floors every day, like, you know, <laughs> some fancy person does, but we're camping might not look like it but we're camping and we have dogs and we're constantly in mud and they stain and you cannot you you can use anything you want on that it will not get clean 
So we said that the storage was a love and a hate or like and dislike. Yeah. Uh, what I hate about the exterior storage is all the storage doors are hinged on the top and not yeah. the side. So they go whoop. Now, Nexus has changed that. I do believe the newer models, you've, all the way from the bottom, uh, Triumph, all the yes. way up to the top, which is a ghost, they've done side hinged. I've contacted Nexus and I've asked them or I've inquired about getting side hinged doors. They wrote back and said, yes, we can hook you up with side hinged doors. This is what it costs. Now it's 100% my fault, I dropped the ball. <laughs> I dropped the ball, we were busy, we were doing things, life happens, yeah. and I forgot about it. So it's something I still think about, it's something I want to do, but it's not cheap. No. It is not cheap looking at thousands of dollars yeah. to change these over to side hinge doors. And then we got to get them painted. Exactly. So, and I was going to say that. Then you'd have to get them painted. Then you got to get them painted to match. So I can change it. It's just not that big of a deal. It is something I don't like, but it's not not going to break the deal, I guess you right. could say. Obviously, we bought it anyway. Yeah. Uh, you don't like the pantry. I do not. That's another original dislike, and it is still a dislike, is their pantry is about this wide, and it's about yay long. So there's lots of room in there. There's a lot of room, but you can't access it can't unless you it. modify it. Some people have made modified it to be a pullout, which we had in the Airstream, but you lose so much space when you do that. Some people have had baskets. But good luck trying to find it, unless you're a basket weaver, trying to get a basket that's four inches wide by five foot long or whatever it is. It's just, it makes it so hard to use. So I actually modified one of the drawers that we weren't using into a pantry. This is kind of maybe nitpicking a little bit. Yeah. But they put two different air conditioners. They're both Coleman Mox, mm -hmm. but the front air conditioner is a 15,000 BTU, yeah. it's low profile, yes. has a heat pump, a heat pump that's never worked. No, But never it's worked. equipped with a heat pump, but it's never worked from day one, never worked. And then on the second AC, it's a 13.5, and it's not low pro, so it sticks way up, it looks ugly, yeah, looks terrible. Yeah, it's so much taller. And this is probably something that we're gonna change is pull these two air conditioners off, and I'll just put on two Dometic Penguin 2s, low pros with heat pumps. Yeah life will be great again. The inverter mm. that they put in this thing is not good. It's not good. It's modified sine wave and it's only wired to certain outlets like the outlets that run the TVs. Problem is it's not just changing the inverter. It's also a battery converter and inverter built into one. But we've gone ahead and used all Victron equipment for the solar. Yeah. So it looks like I'm probably going to have to bite the bullet and purchase a somewhere around $1,500 multi plus two charger and inverter. Yeah. So we have pure sine wave. I want it to power everything. Right. This also might be kind of nitpicky, but I always envisioned a motor home like this having a better shower. We would much prefer it to be the fiberglass shower of now it's not. The texture on it, again with the textures. It. I am literally using scrub brushes and the magic erasers and a old toothbrush try to get all of the crevices and you still miss spots. It is, it takes forever and I hate it. If it was just a fiberglass, you just boop, 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 you're done. Something I hate is the equalizer leveling system on this thing. I hate it. It's so bad. That's another OG it, It's not something I'm probably gonna change, I'm just gonna live with. Yeah. But you hit auto level, it never gets it level. It mm -hmm. never, ever in a million years gets it level. We've reset it time and time again to reset the level or the zero on it. It just can't do it. Yeah. And it's so slow. So I just manually run down the rear, manually run down the front, and then I manually do it side to side, and I do it in Very a quickly. fraction of the time. I guess overall, would we buy Nexus again, and I guess would say specifically a Wraith, would we buy it again? I would. I would as well. Overall, we have been very happy with this. Now we have done a lot of these things that have made it more... Ours. Yeah, it's, it's more accommodating to us and our style of travel and what we like. I really like Nexus as a company. Yes. Now, let me be 100% transparent here. 
we are not brand ambassadors. No. We are not endorsed by Nexus. We're not paid or funded or anything by Nexus. No. We're two completely separate, separate entities. entities, if you want to call us an entity. Yeah. I like that they're a small company. They're not owned by Thor like right, many are. Right. They are their own company, company and they make their own products. And they've been they've been good to us and I don't want you to think they've been good to us because we have a YouTube channel because it's just not true. And people will ask us, well, why didn't you get the Ghost? Because the Ghost has air brakes and it has air ride. Well, I've had my CDL for 23 years. I've been in the trucking industry for 23 years. Yeah. I drove for 16 years. I was an owner operator for eight years. I currently, for the past seven years now, have worked at the truck driving school. So I'm a manager there. I hate air brakes. <laughs> I hate air brakes. <laughs> they're, I don't want to say they're problematic, but you need to know what you're getting into with air brakes. You need to understand how to maintain the system. You need to understand what's required to keep them maintained. In the winter time, uh, mm -hmm. there's, well, there's an air dryer, okay? The air dryer's job is to collect moisture that builds up in the air system and expel it. Yeah. Well, if you don't replace that cartridge, water is passing through into your air tanks. Now we winter camp and you don't want water freezing in your air lines yeah. or in your air tanks. Because then you know that's a big problem when you don't have brakes. <laughs> Frozen brakes of something I've been fighting ever since I've had my CDL. Yeah. Uh, your, your brake chambers have diaphragms in them. They can, they just get old, they dry rot, and they right. start to leak. Now every time you push your foot on the brake pedal, you're pissing air away. Uh, slack adjusters, they're called auto slacks. They're supposed to automatically adjust as your brake shoes wear down. Well, guess what? They fail. Yeah. And they will seize up and they'll stop adjusting. So now you've got brakes way out of adjustment. Air compressors, yeah. they eventually will go bad. They need replaced. There's just so many problems, in my opinion, with air brakes. Yeah. I'm not a fan. And when we were looking, I don't know what their current chassis look like but hydraulic brakes were disc brakes all the way around and the air brakes were drum brakes. No thanks, keep your drum brakes, I'll take the disc brakes. <laughs> I'm done with air. We store our motorhome in our garage. Yeah. If you have air brakes, as that vehicle sits, it will lose air pressure in the air tanks. Now, for those of you that are unaware, you cannot just jump in, start the engine, and drive away. You need air pressure to release your parking brake, AKA the spring brake. I don't want to let the Wraith just sit there and idle inside our garage to build air. So uh, hydraulic brakes eliminates that. I didn't want air ride. I wanted liquid spring. Yeah. <laughs> right? And we got the liquid spring. Air is not king. No. <laughs> if you have air brakes, you prefer air brakes, great. Spend your money in a way that makes you happy. And I didn't want them, so yes. we didn't pay for it. And that's something, you know, just keep in mind is that it's your money. Spend it how you want to. This is our money. We're going to spend it how we want to. And if you want to pay our bills, then you can have a say in how we spend our money. Right. You're free to disagree with us. You can just take over the payments. <laughs> hey, and then everyone's happy, right? right. <laughs> there is a group of people out there that will tell you to stay away from Nexus, but there's groups of people that tell you to stay away from any brand. Yes. You're... Find me a brand that does not have anything negative about it. Yeah, find me a brand that has no hate group or whatever. It's just people might have never even owned a Nexus. They just heard about them or they looked at one. Okay, take that with a grain of salt. I mean, the price point is what drew us to Nexus. Yes. We paid brand new $140,000 for a Super C in 2020. 2020 was a different time. <laughs> but it was in May 2020 before the prices kind of jacked up. So we did kind of get a pretty good deal, I would say, on right. this motorhome. And you know, it's come up, well, we're spending that kind of money by a renegade. Okay, you're talking $300,000. Yeah, or someone even said buy a show hauler. I'm like, okay. Again, you make the payment and we will buy whatever you want us to buy. Feel free to email us or we got our phone number listed, call us, text us. If you have any questions about Nexus, we won't hold back. Yeah. Um, I'll give you our best advice. Yeah, and honest opinions. We're all about being real here. Everything here is real. What you see is what you get. 
And we're gonna keep this thing for a long time. Yeah. Which says a lot because normally we'd have a travel trailer, we'd have it for a year, year and a half, maybe two years, and we were trading for something else. Yep. yep. Now we've got it for over three years and we're gonna keep it for, I bet you we'll do a six year review. We'll do a five year, six year review. You know review. what, I wanna hear your opinion. <laughs> How long do you think we will have this motor home? I wanna see what everyone's opinions are. Drop it in the comments and let us know. So if I had to pick any one mod that I like the most, I'm gonna say liquid spring suspension. Oh, okay. It's probably the most expensive mod. Yes. But man, I've said it before, I'm saying it again. You cannot even come close to the ride that you get from Liquid Spring. If I had to pick one mod, it's actually very tough for me because I go between the server, like removing the dinette and putting the server in, or the refrigerator because I use those spaces <laughs> so, so much. much. They're both uh, very good mods. Yeah, I don't... <sighs> if it were me, I already picked my favorite. <laughs> You would pick out of these two. But if I had to pick out of those two, it would probably be the fridge. But the server, man, it's made a huge difference in our overall camping experience. We kept all the storage, everything so easy. We did nothing but gain. Yes. But we do have to use TV trays to eat dinner or breakfast, but so what? Okay, so what? Now, people might not like that, but when you don't need them, guess where they are? Folded up and put away. So they're not in your way, they're not taking up space, they're only there when you need them and when you're eating. So for us, it worked out excellent. Anyways, we're gonna wrap it up because this is super long. If you made it this far, congratulations. Woo, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you are looking for a Nexus or a motorhome or a Super C or any of the above or just your first camper, we hope this was helpful. We really appreciate you guys sticking with us. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And I guess that might be about it. Yep, that's gonna be it. So until next time, see ya. See ya.